Tokyo got a very, very high fallout because it rained. And uh, the highest level of fallout was detected in the Tokyo metropolitan area of Saitama, cesium radiation levels being detected at nearly a million becquerels per square meter. A becquerel is a disintegration per second of radiation, a level almost twice as high as the Chernobyl permanent dead zone evacuation limit of only half a million becquerels. Now, people want to go to Japan, they want to take their kids skiing, and you know, it's all fine. I just say, don't go to Japan. I've been there. So cross Japan off your vacation list, because part of Tokyo is twice as radioactive as the Chernobyl exclusion limit. Good grief. Is that true? To assess this claim, I contacted members of SafeCast, a network of citizen radiation detectives mapping radioactivity across Japan. It turns out that the measurements that Caldecott cites came from a small group that is no longer active, and they used a wrong definition of the Chernobyl exclusion limit. The Chernobyl exclusion limit is based entirely on the radioactivity of cesium-137 alone. But as that group's report shows, they calculated radioactivity by combining both cesium-134 plus 137. But if we use the accurate definition of Chernobyl's exclusion limit, restricted to only cesium-137, then the same measures do not yield a level in excess of the Chernobyl exclusion limit. So Caldecott's claim is just not true. There's not part of Tokyo that's twice as radioactive as the Chernobyl exclusion zone. And the data she bases her claims on were rejected by the grassroots radiation detection community years ago. Of course, having fallout levels close to the Chernobyl exclusion limit would be reason for concern. But even that has not been demonstrated. As the experts at SafeCast informed me, this sample was not demonstrated to be representative of the area. So while the efforts of the group that collected the sample may have been well-meaning, the bottom line is that the data Caldecott presented is junk. <laughs>